Hello everyone and welcome to MES's e-learning channel. In today's video, we will be studying voltage divider bias configuration. In the previous videos, we have studied uh, fixed bias configuration and self bias configuration. So this is the circuit diagram for fixed bias configuration. And this is the diagram for self bias configuration. So now if you look into both the diagrams, you can see that there is only one difference in both the diagrams, which is this resistor RE. It is present in self bias configuration, but it is not present into the fixed bias configuration. So when we had started studying the biasing techniques, I had told you all to note that resistor in the collector terminal is going to be present in all the configurations that we will study. So you can see that in fixed bias configuration, resistor RC is present in the collector terminal. In self bias also, the resistor RC is present in the collector terminal. So this is going to be fixed in all the three techniques. And we can see that in fixed bias, we had this resistor RB. Fixed bias is also called as base bias. So we can see that one resistor is present in the base terminal. So we had a total of two resistors in fixed bias, whereas in self bias, RC, which is common in all the configuration techniques, was present. Plus, we had RB resistor, which was present in the base terminal. An extra resistor RE in the emitter terminal is present in self bias. And self bias is also called as emitter bias configuration. So you can see that, see the diagrams and you can compare and study the biasing techniques. Now we will see voltage divider bias and see what is the difference in the circuit diagram of voltage divider bias configuration. So this is the circuit diagram for voltage divider bias. Now, if we compare all the three diagrams for or the biasing techniques, we can see that the resistor RC is common in all the configuration techniques and which is present in the collector terminal. There is also a resistor present in the emitter terminal RE. But we can see that there is no resistor RB present in the base terminal. Instead, we have two resistors R1 and R2 in parallel connected to the base. So here we can simplify the diagram by applying Thevenin's theorem. So when we apply Thevenin's theorem, there are two components that we have to find out, which are Thevenin's voltage, which is Vth, and Thevenin's resistance, Rth. So the external DC voltage plus VCC, which is present here, is common between these two points. So we can redraw this circuit, which will look something like this. So we can draw plus VCC separately at both the points. So this is the Thevenin's equivalent circuit for voltage divider bias. We can see that here in place of plus VCC, we have VTH, which is Thevenin's equivalent voltage. And here we have RTH, which is equivalent Thevenin's resistance, which is taken instead of R1 and R2. Now let's see we, how we can find out VTH and RTH. Now to find out RTH, which is the Thevenin's equivalent resistance, we will have to short circuit the voltage sources and we will have to open circuit the load. So according to our circuit diagram, this is the load and we will be open circuiting it. So when we do that, this is going to be our equivalent circuit diagram to calculate RTH. So to calculate RTH, which is here, it is between these two points and there are two resistors R1 and R2 only present in the circuit which are in parallel. So if two resistors are present in parallel, RTH is going to be R1 
dot R2 upon R1 plus R2. So, this is nothing but Thevenin's equivalent resistance RTH. Now, we will calculate VTH which is Thevenin's equivalent voltage. So, to calculate VTH, we will have to draw a simplified diagram. So, to do that, let us see how we can do it. So, here VCC is present which is a positive potential and ground is present over here which is a negative potential. So, basically we are going to form a loop. So, let us take VCC down and connect it towards the ground. So, if you do that, this is how the circuit diagram is going to look. So, here we have VCC, we have simply connected it to ground. Now, well, while we are calculating VTH, VTH is always calculated across the load resistor. So, here th the load resistor is present which is R2. So, we will be calculating VTH over here and we know that VTH is equal to current into the resistor or the load resistor which is in this case is R2. So, basically we have to find out this current I, current parameter I. So, to find out current I, we will be applying K will over here because current I is flowing over here in this path and in this resistor R2. So, we will be applying KVL. So, when we apply KVL, this is what is going to be the equation. We have VCC which is has positive charge. Then we have minus I R1 minus I R2 and that is equal to 0, right? So, we have to find out I. So, we will take I on one side. So, I is equal to VCC upon R1 plus R2. So, this is I and once we have found out I, we will simply substitute its value here in the VTH equation and then VTH is going to be VCC upon R1 plus R2 into R2. So, this is nothing but VTH. So, this there we have found out VTH and RTH. So, here we have the simplified diagram for voltage divider bias configuration. Now, if you remember, it is exactly like self bias configuration, only in place of resistor RB, we have resistor named RTH and in place of plus VCC, we have plus VTH. So, these two, comp these two parameters are nothing but Thevenin's voltage and Thevenin's resistance. So, once we have found out these two parameters, we simply have to find out the Q point parameters which is IC and VCE. These are the coordinates of Q point or operating point and for all the biasing configurations we always have to find out these two parameters. So, to find out IC we will be applying KVL in the input loop which is this side and to find out VCE we will be applying KVL in the output loop or output part which is this side. So, to find out IC, basically we will have to find out IB and if we find out IB, we can automatically get IC because they are related. IC is equal to beta IB. So, if we find out IB, we will simply multiply it with beta and we get IC. So, let us begin by applying KVL in the input loop. So, first we have VTH, then we have minus IB into RTH, current flowing through RTH is nothing but IB. So, IB into RTH minus in the path, now we have VBE. So, minus VBE and then we have RE. So, we have R I E is the current which is flowing through R E. So, we have I E into R E and then we have approached ground. So, this is equal to 0. So, now again we know that 
i e is equal to beta plus 1 i b. We have found out this relation in the previous video. So, you can go back and check this out. So, basically we are trying to find out i b. Hence, we will uh, remove this i e term and write it in terms of i b. So, let us do that. So, this equation can be updated as v t h minus i b r t h minus v b e minus this term which is beta plus 1 i b into r e equal to 0. Now, we have only i b current term. So, let us take it on one side. So, we have v t h minus v b e equal to let us take i b common i b r t h plus beta plus 1 r e right. So, i b is equal to v t h minus v b e upon r t h plus beta plus 1 into r e. So, once we have found out i b, we can easily find out i c. i c is equal to beta into i b. So, beta and just write this whole term again which is v t h minus v b e upon r t h plus beta plus 1 r e. Now, if you compare the I C term for self bias configuration, you can see that all the terms are just the same. Only in place of V T H, we had V C C and here in place of R T H, we had R V. So, all the things are just the same. So, it is very, very simple. We have found out I C. Now, next we have to find out V C E, which can be done by applying K V L in the output loop, which is this side. So, let us do that. So, let us apply KVL in the output loop. So, the first term that we have is plus VCC, then we have this RC term. So, the current flowing through RC is IC. So, its voltage drop is going to be minus IC into RC. Then we have this voltage term present over here. So, minus V C E and then in the path we have this resistor R E. So, the current flowing through this resistor is I E. So, the voltage drop across this resistor is I E into R E and then finally, we have approached ground. So, this is equal to 0. So, to find out V C E, let us take V C E on one side and all the other terms on the other side. So, we have this equation right here. So, we have found out V C E, but if we want to further simplify and only keep one current term, so what we can do is, uh, we know that I C is approximately equal to I E, because I E is equal to I C plus I B and I B is very, very low. So, I E and I C are approximately equal to each other. So, we can write that V C E is equal to V C C minus I C R C minus I C R E. Further, we can take I C common. So, I C in the bracket we will have I R C and R E. So, this is the final equation for V C E. So, we have found out both the terms I C and V C E for voltage divider bias configuration and that is all that you have to find out. So, we have studied voltage divider bias configuration in this video. I hope you understood it. If you have any doubts, you can put them down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.